So for those that might think that uh, the Bible doesn't line up with like current events or world history, uh, I'd like to bring your attention to this. And this is illustrations, but this is uh, old, obviously. I'll try to go slow here, but um, I hate to call it a book because it's not really a book, but it's... So um, it basically is just going through like the beginning. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Uh, Lucifer... Uh, it's, it's sort of a rundown, but I'm going to, I mean, just to sum it up, not, not that you shouldn't read it, though. The rebellion and fall of Lucifer, the first rebellion against the eternal government of God, the government of God. So God decided it wanted the government a certain way, which his laws are what matter. If men and women want to put themselves under communism, God's just like, okay, well, that's not really what I want. But again, free will. So um, this is very interesting so let them have, Adam and Eve, let them have dominion over all the earth. Okay, and then Lucifer usurps earth's dominion from the fallen Adam and establishes his kingdom of darkness. Of course, because Adam and Eve took from the tree. So that's the first prophecy of man's redemption and restored dominion. But it goes on. Talk about government again. So the charter of dominion renewed in God's covenant with Noah. And then again here, the institution of human government. God to mediate his rule through human agents. God to rule through human agents or ordained by God. So when the Bible talks about the elect, it doesn't mean the ones we go to the polls and um, actually appoint. It's the ones God appoints. Um, now here's your first, this would be your first, like this would be here, your, uh, the Tower of Babel. Just look at that as your the old version of the World Economic Forum. <laughs> Seriously. Um, Babel and the Great Dispersion, man's first attempt to create a central, what does it say? One world state without God's moral sovereignty. The nucleus of nations. That's what it says in Genesis 10.32. Nucleus of nations, something God does not want. And what do the when it says, let us go down and confound them, people want to say, oh, God meant more than one God. No, it, Jesus was already, even though Jesus hasn't shown up yet, uh, Jesus was already at the beginning. Um, the call of Abraham, be the instrument in the founding of a new nation for God's own particular purpose, to put the world in line for the promised seed of the woman. The Redeemer King, Emmanuel. So it, everything about the Bible, there's no, you know, you can talk about your, your Buddhism and, you know, your serpent worshiping and full on gong. No, this is like the Bible is a history book. That's what has not been told to people. So uh, Moses, first uh, mediator, ruler of Israel. And, and, and people get confused because they think Israel is somehow special. No, they're just the first of many people. That's all. Um. See, it talks about national beginning of Israel's national history. Okay, and then here's your entrance into Canaan under Joshua. Canaan is your Canaanites. They they ate babies. That's this is the reason everybody hates or has problems with the Old Testament God. Yeah, well, the Old Testament God was so harsh because he didn't want the people here to be intermingling with these people because they would take on those. Um, uh, those traditions, like uh, sacrificing children. And see, after Joshua, the Lord raised up judges. Israel rejects the theocracy and demands a king like all the nations. I talked about this before. 
just for me. I talked about this before in a video, how God, God was going to be their ruler. When he brought them, he used Moses and then went on to use others to bring them out of um, their slavery. God was going to be their ruler. But what happened was man said, is, the people of Israel said, no, we want somebody we can see like all the other nations. Yeah, see where that gets you. See where it gets us? Okay, so going back to this. Um, okay, and then moving on from there, you have from theocracy to monarchy, Saul, the first king to sit upon the earthly throne of the kingdom established at Sinai. And then David, God's un unconditional covenant with David, the house of David to be per uh, perpetuated as the royal line. Solomon... So see, all of the history, um, it, it all goes back to, it's, this is, God is the ruler, not the World Economic Forum. God just allows us free will. So when you want to say, why doesn't he do something, it's because he gave us free will. So when we choose to ignore and want to just act like there's no God, then, well, that's just, like, stupid. <laughs> Sorry, it is. Um, there's plenty of evidence for it. People have just been brainwashed to believe that um, anything. That's why they push Buddhism and all the other religions. They push all of those and don't have a problem with them because they know what the true God is the Bible. So here's more history. The first world empire, Babylon. The first. So see, we're in ba Washington, D.C. is our Babylon, which is about having a king rule over you and oppression and all of that. The doom of the royal family line of the captive king of Judah. And then goes on, Babylon conquered by Cyrus of Persia, Daniel's vision. And then you move on to Greece with Alexander the Great. Greece brought the whole ancient world under the influence of its language and culture. Thus, later in God's purpose, the New Testament was written in Greek. This is important because our medicine, this is where it came from. All the, That's why it's like, you know, you have your uh, ma uh, alpha, omega, all these terms, because it's from Greek medicine. It's the fallen, it's those fake uh, fallen, God, really the fallen angels that weren't gods that our medicine came from. And then the conquering of Rome. The Roman conquerors made their worldwide conquest accessible by building roads over which, in God's purpose, Christian witness, witnesses carried the gospel. And this is just the king and the kingdom Old Testament prophecy. That's all this. And then the birth of the king Jesus coming. And it's, this is the line, the crown, the crown rights of Jesus. So it's all goes, it, it all goes back to him, whether people want to see that or not. It, it just does. Um, and obviously, people know what happened to Jesus. Um, as Jesus said, if, if this was my kingdom, my people would have, you know, not allowed me to be crucified. But he knew that was going to happen. But the divine purpose of this, of, of his, of his uh, being crucified was the Holy Spirit that hasn't been taught enough in any church. Is that that's who your teacher is. That's who your priest is. All these bishops, priests, pastors. No, um, God wanted it where it was the Holy Spirit and you. Because really the Holy Spirit is you, your direct connection to God. It's just it, nobody's taught it right. Okay, so then the manifestation of the Antichrist. So when people talk about manifesting things, just realize manifesting means uh, conjuring. Uh, marked by a seven-year covenant between the rising world ruler and the Jewish people. So a lot of, like I said um, in another video, that's why a lot of this stuff in Revelations has already happened. We're near the end. And the Great Tribulations, that is, um, because that's talked about too in other books. So see, there were many people in the history of, uh, that walked with Christ that um, have been, have been uh, gone. Everybody, you go through your tribulation. It doesn't mean everybody goes through the same one. I'll continue this on the other side.